Well, hello. Welcome to oh, Double Talk. We have our audience here. We have a small studio audience yes. with us today. Thank you very much, folks, for coming in to see us. We'll give you money on the very way out. Pleased to have you here. My name is Mark Steffen. And my name is Michael Mandel. You know, I had a, a hard time picking out a tie today, but I guess you had a harder time. So uh, no, I it's had good no problem to see at all. you here. It's good to see your hair. Michael, you can stop by my house one day, and I'll help you pick out one of my ties. You really? You'll look, you'll look I'd fine. rather go to your house and have some Mai Tai. This, this is Pierre Cardin. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, Pierre Cardin, who, who hasn't actually made anything for the last 20 years. But uh, that's besides the point. You can't it's, beat a, a classic. It's a relic. It's a relic. I mean, an antique. I mean, a valuable entity. Yeah, what's that? Uh, uh, from some old couch? This is thrown from out uh, the uh, Ziggurat, whatever that means. Uh, okay, cigarette? I don't, I don't know. Ziggurat. I thought you was quit smoking. Yes. Well... We're having a fun time talking about ties. You know, I, I believe that the w it's not on the list. That's why that's why we could do this. This is our, our chit chat section. Well, free form. Uh, the two and a half men uh, reopening with Ashton Kutcher yeah. was uh, really good. Okay. You can see the direction of comedy in uh, America. Uh, a lot of partial nudity. Really? Yes. For the waist up. No, they had everything. Oh, they blurred out. They blur it out. So, yes. so here's what's going to happen in the future. You know, we're going to get so used to seeing blurred out <laughs> nudity yes. that every time we see some blurry things, we're going to think it's sexy. So, what's going to happen is your your TV is going to have all this static, and you're going to think it's some sort of like amazing uh, orgy or something. Well, you know, they, they could blur me out. Uh, and uh, time has already taken care of that. It might be uh, yes. to everybody's benefit if they do so. Yes. So uh, TV was good. Also, the uh, Emmys were announced, and uh, yes, did we win? Uh, yes, we did. We oh, won. Wait a in that was our prime category. time Emmy, Michael. It's we prime won. Time. In, we we're are daytime. prime time. No, we're prime. We're daytime. Well, we reruns prime time. That's why you didn't see us, you know, with uh, Jane Lynch on the show. We were at the earlier ceremony. We have. Oh, you ate the award on the way home. It was in Nestle's bar. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. They said here, stay away from the studio. And I you, uh, you ate it on I the way just, home? I was just pleased you have the gift bags that everybody got. You got your gift bag, right? You didn't get I, gift I bag? used my gift bag to so when I was hyperventilating ventilating over the excitement, I, I, I wouldn't pass out. That's what I use my gift bag for. Very good. Yes. Now, so listen, you know what time of year this is? Thursday? Well, the time When's of year. It? The Saturday? time of year. It's oh, time of chili year. Chili crop. Oh, that's how we tell time, of time in New Mexico. Exactly. The chili crop is on its way out now, folks. That's right. Uh, we've had a pretty good crop this year, but it's winding down. I hate when we have a crappy crop. No, we have a good crop. We have a good crop, so it's not a crappy crop. No, and, uh, chili. Uh, but it's winding down, so if you want to get your chili Woo! now, now's the time to run down and get it real fast because they're about to run out. Right, but if you get it, that means somebody else won't get it. That's a picture of you and me. What's going Oh, there we go. There. You know, I'm so disoriented. Do you think that's... Uh, our mountains, or do you think it's Mexico? Oh, those are know? our mountains for sure, for sure. Those and that's are our buttes, green chili, elephant buttes. Yes, um, and people uh, are looking around for chili. I think there's a few places you can still get oh it. Oh yeah, certain supermarkets. That's the best way. Um, you can go to Bayad or Luhan, north and south of town, mm -hmm. uh, and get stuff. I heard the truck store. The truck store just advertised they can do. They have all kinds of chili there. Some of the stores still have their roasters available. I know Fiesta Foods on North Main does. And uh, I know some guy who decided to go and put it in a box and ship it to New York. I went online to look uh, who's online that would do it. The uh, online store for Buy Ads lists a 10-pound box of chili at over $70. That's crazy. 10 pounds. That's nutty. And then to mail it uh, next day, it's another 70. Yeah, well, they're crazy. I must have read that wrong. So, silly. Ad, since you're looking at this uh, show, uh, call up the show and tell us that we're wrong, and you would actually ship out a pound of chili for 25 bucks. I would do it for that. That's worth it. You could go down to the downtown mall. You could. This is what I did. You go to the downtown mall today, farmer's market. I bought an eight pound bag of chili. There's a fellow there who roasted for you for 10 bucks. In his mouth. He's got a roaster there. Oh, okay. And just throw it in. He roasted. I didn't have him roasted because I, I took it home and roasted it myself. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. You said half of it went bad. No, it didn't go bad. It you turned said red. it turned red. It turned red. So That's if you don't roast bad. it in time, you know, what, right. is that what happens? I roasted half of it. Yes, and the other. Put some in the freezer, ate some of it, and the rest I didn't roast. It's turned red. I'm going to dry it out. I'll have enough for red chili sauce. Ah, Once it dries red out. Red chili sauce. 
Mm, enchilada salad. There, there's a guy here the other week, a, an Egyptian chef from uh, Santa Fe, who comes down to Las Cruces and he buys uh, green and red chili powder and he sells it and ships it all over the world. He's got all these markets mm. and he thinks the you know he thinks this is the greatest thing in the world. We live here. And, and we are so spoiled. He put he put a, the plate of the uh, uh, chili powder under your nose, and you, you smell it, and uh, pretty much smells like when you're driving by the Amador yeah. uh, processing plant anytime. Conagra. Yeah, it's it's a great smell. I got to admit, so, chili has a great. So smell. he's selling chili. He's from Egypt. He's from Egypt. How do you know it's not a pyramid scheme? <laughs> I wonder. I, I paused after that to give you ample yeah. time for our audience to applaud, but uh, that's what happens. Uh, you don't pay them enough. That was, a, that was an applaud line, I would say. Uh, not bad. But, yes. you know, besides all the chili is happening here that's about to go out, we also have coming in the whole enchilada fiesta. Well, what do you do after you bought a bunch of chili? you got to make, make enchiladas. enchiladas. And here we have the world's largest the flat enchilada. Yes, flat. That we you can watch being constructed and made. And then you can actually go up and eat some of it. For years, Guinness had us booked as the world's largest enchilada. And we are still the world's largest flat enchilada. Yeah. But people from Guinness Book of Records, which is like either in Ireland or England, don't recognize the difference between a flat and a rolled enchilada. Right. So somebody else last year came up in Mexico with the world's largest rolled enchilada. And it was a community effort. I mean, everybody just put their little enchilada things together Looked and to just me, rolled them out. Just, it was it was a burrito, really. It was a burrito. It wasn't, There's not much it, difference. Because flour tortillas, it was a burrito. They don't know the difference between a burrito and an enchilada down there. We have to go teach Mexicans how to make Mexican food. Well, somebody's got to. I know. They just don't know. They're mm. making, what, Yugoslavian uh, enchiladas. <laughs> They're very good, I believe, Yugoslavian enchiladas, I, I think. I Slava enchiladas. There is no Yugoslavia anymore. Uh, I well, about that. Or Czechoslovakia. There's Czechs. There's Czech Republic and, and Serbia. So anyway, so the uh, enchilada festival is here this weekend. A lot of people try to leave town because it gets a little hectic. Well, there's a parade. Uh, yeah, that's the parade. The parade of they tomato make, sauce. They make the giant enchilada. That must be, wait, is that the, how come they don't make the world's largest pizza? Does anybody make the world's I'm sure largest pizza? Of course they do. Of course they do. We he, don't. Why should we? He he can make the world's uh, largest pizza. He's, He's got, got the all the material. He's got a gigantic pizza plant. You know, I think you've hit on something. I think that's it. I don't know if that, but you know, it may not be the world's largest pizza pan. Oh my gosh, it's tostada. Tostada. We can make the world's uh, largest tostada. No, nobody nobody ever orders tostadas. Well, you got to. The thing is, you have to make pizza. the giant tortilla. Pizza. And that's yeah. the thing. How about the giant, how do you make giant pizza dough? It takes a, an, uh, an army of people. You gotta roll it. You could do it in the, you gotta the way they, no, you How do are you gonna throw up the world's largest pizza dough when you're like this? You use a catapult. You know, we get oh. we get Bob Divin with his ratapult, mm. and we put the thing on the his pizza. ratapult, flies in the air, you have a bunch of uh, people eight, catch year, it. eight year olds. Down because, below. Yeah, eight year olds. Are if they smother to death, well, you right. know. Well, then they have to run back up and they do it again. Because that's hygienic. Or you could flatten it the same way Italians make wine in the old days and in uh, uh, I Love Lucy movies where you have the dough and you just uh, step on it. You just hit it like that and, and you get it all stepped on. I think what you have to do is just roll it out, you have a big rolling station. So the, the rolling same size as your oven. You, you need a log the transfer size. Transfer it over. You need a, a log the size of uh, a roll, you know. For, for what about a you know a pizza platter thing? A pizza. You don't put it in an oven. You put it on that. You're right. Can't be made. Or you put a little dome over the uh, the. Uh, you need to have pizza. fire all around it. Well, he has for the enchilada. Underneath it. Taco. Right, but if you put a dome over it, that would encapsulate the heat. We talked to the guy from Zafiro's. He could do it. We'll work on Zafiro's, it. Zafiro's uh, cook could borrow that platter for the enchilada for his pizza oven. And well, he could build a pizza oven around there. Well, you know, speaking of pizza, we, you and I just had pizza at a new place just the other day. We did, and we've been looking forward to this place because we, it's a form. We love uh, vineyards and people that do uh, wine tastings. And this is the Lunarosa uh, mm, pizza, pizza wine, and, and wine or They also have paninis and salads. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were we, had lunch we there. were moderately pleased. Yes, they're still. I think I think they're still getting their act together. They are still working. Haven't quite figured out how to really make a pizza yet. They they will work on it and also their service things. But uh, we that actually are, actually we are we pizza. are glad. Well, the traditional Italian pizza is thin, yeah. but is actually uh, uh, heated at a very much higher heat so that it crisps up and puckers, yeah. just yeah. like Zafiro. 
we're, we're, we're used to Zafiro's pizza. Maybe we'll get used to this. I don't know. Their, their mozzarella was very good. Mozzarella was good. They could have cooked the pizza uh, crust a little bit longer, I think. I and think so uh, too. They, and I had the or, the uh, anchovy pizza. They could have put a few more anchovies on it. They could have. I thought they you were know, a bit. Uh, had the uh, on there. pizza with pepperoni. Their pepperoni is very good. In fact, I was there today. I had a piece of uh, pepperoni pizza. And the pizza, although it wasn't notable, as soon as you hit the pepperoni, man, it's tasty. Sure it is. And when I was there, I had the Quattro Stagioni, as you know. Which came with only three ingredients. Well, four ingredients, but if you have Quattro, you know, make it like a Quattro. They didn't mix they didn't the didn't mix it up. They had, they had the segmented. prosciutto, the uh, anchovies. And the mushrooms. Not the anchovies, the artichokes. Artichokes. And, and mushrooms. So that's three. Where's the fourth? On the bottom. What's that? It, the mozzarella cheese. Oh, they count the cheese, huh? Yeah, I know you count the cheese. All right, it didn't work I don't. For me. But uh, they could they could work that out. They are they are glad to work with you. It seems anything you suggest, they'll sure. nod their heads. And well, that's good because they're still trying to get their act together, and yeah, we I, wish them, I wish we them I wish them the best. We like new restaurants. Absolutely. So keep coming up with new restaurants. I heard uh, <laughs> Brandon Brown is still thinking about doing a restaurant. Does he still want to call it the Glory Hole? I certainly hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Me I don't too. know if he's waiting for if he was waiting for Durango Bagel to go out so he can get back in. He loved that place. Well, now he, it's called Ultimate Bagel or whatever a, it's called. Uh, it's called something like uh, Intuition or Integrity. Or integrity. Integrity. Anyway, they changed the name to a, a name bagel. worse than Durango Bagels. Yes. Whatever but, it is. But that's where uh, Brandon Brown. Probably everybody who's watching the show knows Brandon Brown. He's the guy from Lo-Fi Productions. He has always wanted to get back and work in that building. He loved it. When it was the Golden Bowl. The Golden Bowl was was an icon. And uh, I think the thing he liked was the sign that he could put up in front of everything. He okay. loved that sign He because he could make up different sayings every week. That's true. And everybody walked by and they or drove by, laughed, and got into an accident because they're laughing so hard. They're just driving all over the place. They're no, just, look, well, let's move on because we've got, we only got a couple on, of minutes. Yes. I understand that um, down in uh, Gadsden School District, the uh, apathy there among parents what? and teachers is so bad that they have to actually bribe the parents to show up to teacher conferences by uh, giving them uh, prizes. prizes. Uh, they do a little bingo raffle. Uh, you can get a garden uh, uh, what uh, supplies garden hose or ice chests ice chests some nonsense that you know, and then I had a girlfriend she had an ice chest well that's good I, they, and then they wonder why their third grade kid can't read and gets held back another year but since this program has started since this uh, woman has started this program uh, they've gone from 900 parents uh, coming in to about uh, 1800 in the last two years, it's increased to 1,800. So that's good. Well, if that's what they have to do to get the parents involved you do have in to their own children's to do education. Things. It's just like getting people out to go to theater in this town. You have to go to their house, uh, bind them with leather, and, and put them in the trunk of your car. And that's how you get people to do things. Well, I know I've gotten in trouble for that, and then, but and then, it's worth it. And then, too, too bad, you know, the theaters aren't always so good that you have to take them to. Not always, but very often it is good. It could be surprising good. Yeah, well, that's what we hope. Yes. So, 39 Steps is playing tonight, those of you. Now we don't have to answer it, uh, talk about it at the end. 39 Steps at Black Box Theaters tonight. Uh, I hear that it's uh, pretty good. I will let you know when I see it. Should we take a break now? Do you think it's time? What do you, I'll choose it. Now or after I, we choose? I think we're probably close enough to that we could take a break. Uh, well, okay. We, we will, let's compare ties. You want to switch well, ties? We've got 30 seconds. Listen. Yeah, you want to do something important. So I can say, you know, this week the, the uh, engineering students from the university are taking a poll about Las Cruces utilities. Oh, don't and have a picture of a poll of utilities? And Is they're going to be good? around town at five different places around town today, Saturday, asking people what they know about their local utilities. Um, that's a good time for you to voice your opinions and, uh, and let the city know how you feel about the utilities. And with that, we will take a break, and we'll be right back after these words. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're back, folks. 
We were just talking about the Los Cruces Utilities. They're doing a poll. As well as playing with our audience. Yes. If, you go to, if you go to the downtown mall today, they'll be down there taking a poll. Until what can they possibly noon. ask you about your utilities? They want to ask How you. How do you like your electricity? Is it, mm. more, is it nice? Well, is it do you warm? know who is provides it? your utilities? They're yes. going to be taking a poll like this. A woman will be there. That woman provides my, all the utilities I need. Ooh. Well, send her over. Oh, okay. Well, she's going to survey you. Anyway, the, the city wants to know what, how, what people know and feel about their local utilities. How you feel about your utilities? I can tell you how I feel about it. I resent having to pay on my oh, utility God. bill. Recycling. Yes. I, have, I resent having to pay for recycling. Well, why don't you move at back a, at, home? A, at a vacant house where nobody lives to regenerate recyclables. But I still have to pay for a recycling bin I will never the, use at this vacant house. Why don't you rent your vacant house? I mean, that way you'll have money to pay for your recycling. Do mm. that. You have like four bedrooms there. You could put a family of 20 no. in there. That just, I just represent hundreds of other houses around Las Cruces that are sitting vacant. They've just been built. Uh, they haven't sold yet. They've been recently re renovated. They're vacant. Those poor people if who they own those houses sold yet, they don't have need to pay utilities. for recycling. Well, they have the electricity on. No, they have they the water on to keep they? the plants alive. Do they? I don't know. Yes. And, but if they have one utility on, they have to pay for recycling. And I think that's wrong. That's why I'm going to run for City Council District 3. You're going to be just like the guy in Saturday Night Live who runs, who's running for, my rent's too damn high. That's right. Right. That's, you're going to be he one ran note. For president. He, he is running for president. Well, he did last well, time. Well, he's going to run this time. Too. I hope he does. Or maybe governor. We need people governor. like that running for office. The rent is, yeah. Because uh, rent's too damn high. My two dollar recycling bin is is bankrupting uh, me. Well, that's you know. Bring 30, your bring your overage there. Thirty dollars a year. I don't need to be paying. Bring it over. Times bring a hundred. Times three hundred houses in Las Cruces. That's way too much. What nine thousand dollars? Yeah. Oh. A year. The city doesn't they, need to be. They make a they make a lot more on uh, on the uh, red light things. I don't care what they make a lot more you. on. They made a hundred bucks from you. No, they didn't. <laughs> you didn't pay. Oh shit. And I never I'll know. give you his, if you watch the show after we turn off the show, I'll tell you his address. Uh, you don't know my address okay. anymore. Well, speaking of addresses, you know, the don't uh, ask, don't tell thing uh, has been removed from the military. How, you wondered how I made that segue, didn't you? Well, what? what because I was talking about address. I'm wondering why you did, because we're gonna, we need to talk about the Trinity side first. Do you want to talk about that first? We should do that because oh, okay. we don't want to confuse our producer who's going to bring up the graphics about it. <laughs> Oh, I wanted to see the Trinity site in a dr Oh, there it is. So this weekend... What is the Trinity site, Michael? The Trinity site, I believe, is if anybody was around there, is where uh, the sun, the ghost, and God uh, all oh, got no, together. Not that Trinity. Oh. No, the, the real Trinity, Trinity is what the we're talking about. Oh, the real one? Yes. Oh, obviously the first A-bomb test in the world, which was held about, what, 120 miles from here? <laughs> yeah. That's what it looked like. Oh no! What it was? That? That's the obelisk oh, that's the, erected uh, uh, of volcanic lava. You on, and I were there about 15 on years the ago. On site, yes. You and I went there together. And that's what it looked like. And that I was remember I was there. Yes, I do remember. And uh, it was pretty Should hot that day when the bomb went off. <laughs> yes, and remember, as Jerry Lewis, you became a superhuman being because of all those atomic rays and. That's why whenever you get mad, you burst. Oh, that's the whole. Yes, and it wasn't while I go, lady. <laughs> Can't help it. That's the way it is with Jerry Lewis. And that's what happens with uh, the Trinity bomb. Anyway, the Trinity bomb site is kind of interesting. You it's can open uh, October first. Yeah, it's uh, cool. From we eight, liked it from eight o'clock until you two can look at Trinidium, which is the glass trinitite. 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 It's called. Yeah, when the glass was fused in the atomic uh, fury. Was, yes, because it was so hot, and pretty much sand, which is pretty much what we have there. That's what you make glass right. out of. Yeah, so it's about it's 150 green. miles north. Uh, you drive, if you take drive Interstate 25, Segura. you turn right at uh, San Antonio. Oh, San Antonio. That's a car. And you drive east till you get to the Stallion Gate. You turn right and you drive down another 15, 20 miles. And it's free. It's free to get in. Right. Other times you actually have to pay to get in and stuff. It's worth seeing at least uh, once could before it blows up, you know. Again, you don't know when that's going to happen. You can nuke so it again. Also, well. if you want further information, you can call the White Sands Information Office at 678-1134. What a memory. And that's White Sands, yes. Yes. And if, if we do have a nuclear bomb, 
Uh, this month is National Preparedness Month. And that's what the nuclear bombs are for, rather. That's right. right. And here's what prepared. you do when there's a bomb. Duck in the cover. <laughs> that's all you got to do. Good, and that'll save you. Yes, that's right. Ronald Reagan it. said all you need is a shovel, and you'll be safe from the nuclear bomb. A Holocaust. shovel or uh, eat uh, ketchup. Because <laughs> <That's laughs> it's a vegetable. Because uh, eating ketchup, well, it's good for everything. Reagan knows. It makes you, so we don't even know what happens during National Preparedness. You know why? We forgot to prepare. Darn. Darn. It's and I used to be a Boy Scout. Well, the motto was, be prepared. People still call you a Boy Scout. Well, I am. Yes. Lift but your chin. You're going to get poked by that box. Oh. Okay. So, yeah, it's National Preparedness Month. Preparedness Month. Basically, what that means is, you know, in, well, case, in case there's a flood, in case there's a national emergency, are you prepared a tornado. For a tornado, anything. Are you prepared to, be, say, exist for a, a week? without being able to go to the grocery store, oh. without being able to go and buy water. What if the water's cut off? You need to be prepared to last at least a week. That's, That's ominous. That's how much you weigh. That's uh, ominous to, to say that. And also, shouldn't we all go out and buy a Bible then? No. Can you eat it? If you no. Can't eat it, can you drink it? No. No. What good is it? So that's the kind of emergencies we're, we're looking at, huh? What about if your bathtub overflows? You is, that, keep, is that uh, Keep your bathtub full. That way you've got plenty of water in case there's an emergency. Well, that's always a good thing to have. Yeah. So uh, we're prepared for the next thing. If you really want to be prepared, don't go down to the Santa Teresa airport to take your international flight because they have just canceled all international incoming or outgoing flights. You can still fly nationally, wherever well, that's going to be. It, well, it's, a pl it's an airport pr pretty much for private uh, yes. air, airport, air, air traffic. Uh, there were a few flights that come in from what is so it's called an international or, airport, or, or other places or in Mexico, Mexico unstated. Gee, what, what so, do you think are in those airplanes? Well, you know, passengers. I believe oh. they're passenger flights. Yes. yes, but anyway, apparently they have good mushrooms down there. I believe the their security yeah. was deemed not to be uh, up to date you know, with the current scenario. So they one wonders if they had any at all. So what they I guess well, that's what they finally discovered. The Las Cruces Airport does. They do. Yes. They they have you walk through a thing before you get in. That's not that's not what it is about at all. It's, it's about uh, when things are coming in. And, oh, and, uh, I wouldn't know about anything like that. A lot that. of other things that we're not really privy to. No, we it's don't. It's all homeland like security. What's this thing? Uh, oh, speaking of which, uh, Mexico is, is, as we know, a dangerous place these days. A lot of it due to people shooting each other in Juarez. Gun I think traffic. eighty thousand people have been killed at some point. A lot uh, of the guns from the, from the U.S. go down to Mexico. That's where they get most of the guns, let's face it. Right, because they don't sell guns necessarily in Mexico as much as we sell guns here. Well, guns are outlawed in Mexico. The average citizen uh, is not allowed to possess right. a gun like we can here. As we say here, only if we outlaw guns here, only outlaws will have guns. Well, at least we'll know who the outlaws are, won't we? Yeah, as they shoot us to death. Now, no, they can't do that. We have a nuclear bomb. Now, the uh, Mexican governor, uh, the president of Mexico, has hinted that maybe the U.S. should consider legalizing drugs so that the uh, drug cartels would, would be basically put out of business. Right, because it they make all their money. It would stop, yeah, because we're, uh, the, we're the big we're we're the the ones who consumer. support them. So if, there, if uh, drugs were illegal, only illegals would have drugs? So, yes. Yeah, so <laughs> no, we, we want them <laughs> legal. So if drugs yeah. are legal... No, then if drugs are legal, then, <laughs> then you're, you're, you'd be legal if, if, for instance, you had drugs. But we know you don't. So I, no, I now you're illegal. I have if an aspirin at home. I don't mind do? taking that now. Is and that then. what you keep there? So, but, anyway. Oh, but that whole thing about guns was uh, they decided to keep the youngest Reese kid in prison. So because he already had, uh, he was trying to get a new Mexican or a Mexican passport. Well, the local gun shop was selling drugs to, war, to Mexico. But speaking uh, of they guns. They were selling guns to Mexico. Speaking yes. of guns, it was a gun that killed uh, President Kennedy. Yeah, it was bought here in, uh, in Deming. Well, we're not sure about that. No, we don't know. We don't but so. um, since the... Uh, You've heard something new? Well, people... Since 1963? Said, well, Lee Harvey Oswald was a lone gunman. I never said Or that. was it a conspiracy? Really? Well, we now know that it was a conspiracy. Because? One of the conspirators, E. Howard Hunt, admitted it on his deathbed that he was involved in the plot to assassinate President Kennedy, which makes it now a verified conspiracy. But is the, is the national media yes. covering it? No. Well, it's official here because we, we are, are the national media. Of course, we have stated this. This will be on YouTube all around the world. It's true. That our show has said that Mark said that he heard something that said it was a conspiracy. Yeah, because Howard, Howard Hunt, who was dying, 
On his deathbed. He couldn't. I, he had to wait until he was dying. He was on his deathbed. So Why didn't they give him a deathbed earlier? What did he have before? Like a Serta? No, he's dying of What's old age. Oh. Yeah. That will get you every time. Yeah, that's right. His if son was there and recorded it. That. Among, yeah, so. Well, before we die, we, we should probably cancel the show. Uh, not cancel the show. Don't cancel the show yet. We're, we still have things to say. But you can close the well, show. Well, Don't Ask, Don't Tell has been now been uh, gotten rid of. It's don't, been three days, and, and I, I actually haven't asked anybody. They haven't told me. Are so you I, one? Uh, you're not supposed to ask me. Oh. And uh, with that, we're going to ask you to watch Tell? our show oh. next week and uh, go to 39 Steps tonight at the Black Box Theater and whatever graphics we put on, and we will see, we can see them next week? We're going to see them I next week, so. and if you missed part of the show, you can watch it again uh, Tuesday night at 6 o'clock right here on Channel 98, Las Cruces' own channel. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you here next week on Double Talk.